This is Star Talk. Let's move on to Brandon. Wow. God. You guys, you can't see Chuck's face, but he's... <laughs> A back he has taken. A back he has been taken. <laughs> okay. Brandon. Brandon, this better be good. I got a feeling it is. Ag, Ag Cameron. Brandon Ag, Ag Cameron. Ag Cameron. Ag Cameron. Okay. I the think Brandster. I, got, I think I got it. <sighs> Brandon says, hey, Bill, considering you've been on both sides of the argument on GMOs, can you, in your opinion... I don't know whose else opinion you would do it I'm in. very good at mine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, list the most beneficial and non-beneficial reasons for GMOs. Ooh, nice one, uh, Mr. Uh, oh, he spelled it out phonetically here. Ag Cameron. Ag Cameron. So, uh, yeah. Mr. Ag Cameron, here's the deal. He wants you to play your own devil's advocate. Yeah, good and bad. Yeah. So, so as they say, this the good is, Ladies is... and gentlemen, Bill Nye, pro and con. Uh, the good side is we get more yield for, per hectare or acre. Okay, one. So in other words, we have less uh, impactful farming. In other words, we affect the ecosystem less because we'll produce more food on less land. That's the upside of okay, genetically modified. That's one, four. We're using biology to fight pests and diseases rather than chemistry. That's two, four. So that's good. The unintended consequence, the classic one, is either the things you don't know. To be, not to go all uh, misguided military principle uh, policy on you, but mm -hmm. the unknowns, the known unknowns. The known unknowns. Like, well, you don't know what you're going to do. But right. the, the one that everybody has observed is the monarch butterflies, where we have reduced their population 90%, not as a consequence exactly of raising genetically modified food, but by using this extraordinarily effective herbicide that has killed the milk flowers or milkweeds, which nourish the monarchs. So an un unintended consequence there. And so are there ones that you don't know? Are so, there other insects and pollinators that you affected accidentally by messing up their food source? And the other unintended consequence, uh, and not a necessary one, is by monoculture farming. Enormous tracts of a single type of plant make it very hard for bee bees as pollinators to get the job done. They right. got to go out there, do that one crop, then there's nothing to do, and somebody puts them back in a box and puts them on a truck and takes them to a different crop, and they just get beaten up. They right. can't handle it. But this is not necessarily— Then you get bees coming home stressed out. They do. They are. Babe, God, what a day, I got to tell you. That's you right. should have seen it. It's Except stressed it's a girl, on and it's on a girl forever. Voice. It's oh, a girl voice. Oh, that's cause, correct, because all the bees are female. Uh, that's, all the ones that are pollinated. Workers, right, yeah. pollinated. So go, go ahead. Do it again. Honey, I just can't believe the day I had. I'm yeah. telling you, this is just <laughs> awful. Those— Chuck Nice just seem to is Hymenoptera vespae. <laughs> yes, all right. Chuck Nice is a four winged fly. All right, so uh, all right. Uh, the unintended consequences are things like the monarch butterflies and this monocultural farming, which uh, affects the pollinators and our whole agriculture system. So these are things that are avoidable. Gotcha. So it's good and bad, but it's manageable. And I think it's just a necessary consequence when you're going to have. 7.2 billion people become 9.2 billion people. You're going to have to do something to feed them. Mm -hmm. And indeed, we all prefer the texture, taste, and nutrients from nominally uh, hybridized crops over the last 10,000 years. Mm -hmm. And this modern biotechnological way of modifying is just the next thing humans are doing. Gotcha. So, all right, that was great to see you uh, argue both sides there. And basically, the, the, the biggest problem is the unknowns. Well, that's it. That's what you want to avoid. But you can't do it until you do it. You can't know until you do it. Though. But humans have been doing this for centuries. You know, we try this plant, it doesn't work, so we try that plant. And I, so the claim is Believe me, I, I've been there. Yeah, so <laughs> the claim is that I you do it very carefully. <laughs> right. And so for those of you tuned into our previous episode, I talked about these guys are able to ask these people are able to assay or sequence genes literally 10 million times faster I know, that's than they could even a decade ago. Fantastic. It's amazing. amazing. 10 million times. And the reason is people have invested in the technology, people, engineers who have developed the technology worked really hard on it because there's so much uh, to be, so much gain to be had. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And everybody prefers delicious corn to not delicious corn. Everybody prefers delicious apples to, or 
good tasting apples, not right. to single out a particular flavor. I do like the Red Delicious. I'm a Honeycrisp man I'm, myself. I'm down with Honeycrisp. Yeah. But I, I will remind everybody, there's two things about Red Delicious that I really like. Uh, which are? They're red. Okay. And they're... Delicious? Yes. <laughs> I like my Galas. Yeah, I Galas like the, are okay. Yeah, I like the Brayburn. Yeah, the Brayburn's all right, too. I'm, uh, I'm not a big Granny Smith guy, but I'll choke it down. Yeah, uh, so anyway, <laughs> with that said... Uh, when it comes to genetically modified food or crops, we right. just have to be diligent. Okay. So and here's that the deal. requires regulation. What? Now, uh, see, now you lost me, man. Mm. I'm a Republican. I'm, t- t- I'm all against the regulation of any kind. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so I'll watch for you when the light's red. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is Star Talk. Star Talk. 